All right, I think we're recording. So, what's up, guys? This is Stuart. Um, I'm here with James, and we're here to show you a little demo of what we've been working on and our progress so far on Flora and Saffron. So, um, initially, I'm going to show you guys Flora. Flora is our package manager for smart contracts. So. It's a pretty simple CLI tool right now. Um, you can register names, upload packages, install them. So I'm going to go through and we're going to essentially check if there's a username available. So we can check for Bob. Bob's already registered. We can check for Stuart. I'm pretty sure he's registered too. Oopsies. He is. Okay, so we're going to do uh, check Alice. And Alice should be available to register. So we can do Flora, register, Alice. And there we go. So now we have this name. And what happens is that when you register a new name, uh, you, a, an RSA key pair is generated. And you keep the private key. The public key gets uh, uploaded to the server. And that's used for verifying your identity and signing packages moving forward. So now we're going to want to upload some sort of smart contract. So the way you do that is you have a username, slash, and then you call this something. So we're just going to call this token. And go ahead through it. And uh, you distinguish where it is that you have uh, your project folder. And now a project folder is two files. Uh, you just have to point to the directory it's, that it's at. Uh, it's going to be the TSOL file, which is a Jinja template with Solidity in it, and then an example payload and that's going to be a JSON file. And that JSON file needs to essentially fill your TESOL file and make that compilable. So what's going to happen on our side is that when I point to the project folder where I have the TESOL file and the JSON file, is that it's going to quickly render that template and then use Sol C, which is uh, the Solidity compiler, to make sure that's valid. So I have an example contract just for an ERC um, token in example. It does it pretty quickly, um, but there there was a ERC20 token uh, contract in there, JSON. And what it does then is it encrypts, um, essentially signs a secret and passes that back and forth to make sure you're Alice. So you don't actually have to store any passwords in uh, plain text. You don't have to store or push anything up in plain text. Uh, it's all taken care of for you. So there we go. Now we have this package up onto Flora. And what James is going to do is create a new blockchain and then pull that package down and install it. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a new corner. And so it's going to show us a little bit of information about where it's being uh, installed or and then it's also showing us some information about um, the environment variables that we'll be using. So, um, and then it walks us through setting up the new node. Uh, and we want to be running 8545. That's fine. Network ID is going to be default to 1900. Um, we're going to say no. Auto bag, yes. That looks correct to me. And then uh, we're going to choose a random chain ID. And then that is the Genesis payload. That also looks correct. And we're going to have a super secure password. And what that did is it uh, created a new chain using that. And the next thing that we're going to do is we want to source the blue coin. And what that does is it sets some environment variables so that we can do. Uh, it's like kind of like working on our. We want to work on this new coin or that new coin or whatever. And it allows us to do that. And then, uh, we also compiled our. Uh, built a Docker image, which more or less based off of the get client uh, go up here in Docker file. There's a couple of modifications with how it was built, but what we're going to do is we're going to mount the new point folder, and I'll show you that in just a second. 
that we're going to do is insert the get client. And you can see that we have our random chain ID here. And, and then it's going to go through and uh, begin processing the deck. And while that's doing this thing, um, we'll go through and kind of show you the folder layout of what we have in Yukon. So some of the interesting stuff is the contracts folder. Uh, it's kind of like a staging folder where we can, using Flora, we can um, compile a contract and get the SOL, like the SOL file, and we can put it there, and then we can deploy that out to our private chain. Uh, what else is in this folder is we have the get IPC, so we can do a get attach, and then we also have some helpers with the uh, SQLite file. And uh, yeah, so, so can we, can you uh, show everyone how we've been uh, doing the Flora? Yeah, yeah, totally. So uh, you're going to want to install uh, contracts on your chain. One of the problems that we have seen is like, uh, it's hard to have a centralized in the sense that everything is at one source centralized um, package repository. Um, and so just like you download things from pip, uh, if you use Python or NPM, if you use Node, that's what Flora is. So Flora install, just like uh, NPM install or pip install, uh, and we can reference now again that token that we uploaded a second ago. So Flora install Alice token, and now this is going to be uh, streamlined later, but basically what we do is we pipe that into the contracts folder. So we're going to do, that is in my home directory, slash lambda slash new coin, slash contracts, and then I'm going to call that token.soul. And what that's going to do is go ahead and pull it down, and there you go. So now we have that. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, so then we can take a look at this, and, uh, you know, you can see it's just kind of a standard CLDB contract for creating a little token, and, uh, let's see where we're at with this here, get closer, okay. So, one of the other things that we kind of started working on as well is we built another Docker image that has a REST interface uh, API sort of sort of deal and maybe we can uh, do a little show and tell what that kind of looks like. Yeah, the idea behind this is that you can take uh, something from a development environment and then spin it up into these Docker images and then deploy that across your infrastructure, you know, in one pipeline rather than, okay, kind of fiddling around with getting a chain up and running and then fiddling around and trying to get, you know, an explorer up and running, not only just for the development standpoint uh, to see and use the explorer to see, oh, um, what does this account look like? Are these things working on my chain? Yeah. Um, but then... Yeah, so like this is the uh, explorer that we're working with right now. So this is just like a Git repository um, online. Uh, we wrap this up, or it might have al already existed in the Docker image. Um, and so this is now live. The idea is that we can add more services to Ethereum. Um, when we start going into other services, like Bitcoin's going to have its own sort of uh, service collection that you're going to want to deploy and we can just wrap those up into images and then spit them out and uh, they'll be up and running you know, in a matter of seconds. Okay, yeah, so we got uh, Block Explorer, we got, we got mining happening. Yeah, we should be good to deploy a contract now. Okay, so let's uh, Do that. So it should be as simple as sourcing the uh, new coin uh, environmental variables and then did we source? Yeah, we did source. Okay. And then Saffron deploy. 
And what that's doing is it's just going through the contracts folder, checking to see if there's any sole files, and then um, based off of the account, um, we can choose which one to unlock. If there are multiple accounts, um, but we only have one on there right now, so we're just going to unlock that one. And uh, that super strong password again. And yeah. Three. All right. So we yes. have ourselves a contract put to a problem chain. Yes. In what? Like five minutes, ten minutes? Yeah, super fast. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, that's where we're at. It's, it's more now, um, you know, uh, refining that user experience for the developer so it's even quicker um, and all this stuff is more automatic. Um, I know for, I'm doing a lot of development on Flora, uh, I'm looking at specific implementations um, and the ability to kind of do like on the fly um, deployments of contracts. So like for the ERC-20, token, there's like eight variables you want to change. Um, you, yeah, you ever want to change. So you could potentially just want to change them on the fly after you download it. So what's the best way to essentially have that um, structure, that TESOL file structure, and then pipe new payloads into it? And then also, what if somebody has, you know, a payload that you just want to copy, um, and it already has all that information in it? So looking at implementation yeah. as well. Yeah, so, and, and that's just one of the things I wanted to add, too, so it's like, with the kind of block explorer interface that we have right now, what we also want to do is we want to, it's on the, it's on the backlog right now, but basically the idea is that it would be, for me, it would be really nice as a developer to be able to take these TSOL files, have a user interface for it that shows us the variables that we can change, go through, change it and then have a nice little button that says deploy, and then it deploys it to, to a contract. Yeah. In addition to that, yeah, and then in, in addition to that, like, some of the, some of the work that's been, uh, been done using Node Red, where it has the flow-based user interfacing, um, to a similar to, like, Scratch or, like, uh, uh, Max, uh, Max uh, MSP or Pure Data, uh, you know, it might be possible, too, to, to chain the, uh, the contrast together in such a way that it's more composable and reusable. Um, some of the other stuff that we want to add on the user interface for the developer admin dashboard uh, also includes being able to deploy different services. So not only being able to deploy a block explorer, but maybe it'd be nice to have uh, some other user interfaces or um, you know that sort of stuff where uh, it's kind of like a one-click deployment for uh, developers. Yeah, absolutely, and that's yeah, that's the whole that's the whole shtick. Uh, it's really just taking what the general pathways of a developer um, is doing currently as a web developer, or has done through some of these other technologies that is, have existed, and transposing that upon blockchain. Because a lot of the um, application cases are similar, right? People are saying, how do we apply blockchain to what we're doing now? And so to do that, we need to model uh, the same uh, experiences, the same interfaces, the same analogies, the same way that ways that people are used to doing these things into blockchain. And so that's that's the goal of Lambda overall. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that's about all I really yeah. have to share. Now. Um, yeah. We're always so we're looking for help. Um, you know, if, if any of this stuff is interesting to you, uh, you know, we're more than willing to uh, to to work with you. And, and you know, it's open source, so if, you know, feel free to <laughs> drop us a line. And uh, yeah, yeah, send us an email. You know, do a pull request. Uh, get in touch with us and. You know, this is this is what we're doing, um, and we want more people who are are seeing our vision and want to be part of that to you know obviously contribute in whatever way they can. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for your time, though. Yeah. Thanks, guys.